it, that it could have never have flown smoothly in an atmosphere. Yeah, because usually when the rockets are smooth on the They outside. have to be smooth. Anything designed to smooth in an atmosphere. Yeah. And they had one great big, big smoke trail coming out of that thing. Of course, they're flying in fighter craft that don't have any smoke trail. But this thing is leading a trail like it was a Saturn rocket going up. And there was no smoke trail from the, uh, from the stabilizing rockets that they were using. But this big, huge smoke trail going up, folks. Oh, and then the other part is I wasn't quite certain about the dog, aptly named the oh, dog. Oh, I know. Okay, because the dog... Poor okay, doggy. The poor doggy, uh, let's just say he was yelping like he disappeared when he was in the ship that was upside down with us. Yeah. And the, then he reappeared. He re miraculously reappears. Everybody knows the dog was killed. Yeah. Everybody knows the dog was yeah, killed. Because in the movies, that's what always happens when the dog is But somebody, killed. what happened was, was that um, when you do a movie by committee, nobody knows, okay, it's just like, I mean, I'm figuring what they're doing. Um, I worked on, um, I did some work on sci-fi stuff, m m movies in the 60s and 70s, and they'd give each section of the movie a piece of the script to work on, yeah. which is why you see sometimes, God, that looks like a god-awful long movie, because uh, if there's nobody that's generally supervise everything, your department tends to go wild. You mean like Transformers? Yeah, you just keep doing your stuff yeah. if nobody's there. Uh -huh. And this one had seven producers, five writers. I was really kind of surprised about that. Yeah, it means that, uh, first of all, it means they didn't have, the, they didn't, they, we looked and there's no budget listed, which means that a... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they, they uh, what it is, they got Harrison Ford to come on board. I'm willing to guess because uh, Andy, they're, they're getting, ready for Indiana they're getting Jones. Andy to one, too. They wanted to keep him happy. They wanted to put him in a movie to put him in front of the screen, and they wanted him to be in shape. Mm -hmm. Because I did notice that Harrison Ford got younger as the movie progressed. Oh, did you notice Remember? that? Yeah, that all of a sudden, you know, he was acting his age at times in the beginning of the movie, but by the end of the movie... This is a guy that's ready to go jump on a horse at full speed and ride off. Well, he was riding off. Of the <laughs> yeah. So, and it was a good. It was a good. It was a character actor's role. This was not a Harrison Ford role. It was a role for a character well, you know actor. What? I was, yeah, I was kind of surprised about that. But you know, they wanted to put, give him billing as well as Daniel Craig. Now, one of the things I was surprised about Daniel Craig because, first of all, I've never been a Daniel Craig fan. I am totally not a Daniel okay. Craig fan. So I have to admit. So I, well, I know you noticed him. Let's let's just say. Um, Flipping in and out of accent. Oh yeah, he he he'd be doing a long series of uh, dialogue, and he'd go in, he'd go back and doors, you know, that, that very British voice. So. But you know what? It's like for for the character that he did. I mean. But he looked he like he belonged in a three-piece suit, not in a cowboy outfit. But he guy. did wear the cowboy outfit. I mean, and, and the rear view did look kind of nice sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But the the basic problem with Daniel Craig is. Okay, Daniel Craig is aging faster than any of the other guys that played James Bond. Yeah, he's considerably older than I remember him from... Uh, yeah, yeah, he is basically, he's aging, he's not aging well. You know, he wasn't that great looking to begin with, but he is looking like he has, uh, you know, been you know, out in the sun way too much, and he basically not, he's basically kept well, himself buff, buff, but still he do does not... Do you think not, it's just for that look for the Western? No, from because I've seen him... I, I, we saw him in, while we were watching, we are watching a preview of another movie that he's in, which is basically a semi-remake of the Amityville Horror, but with his new wife, you know, Rachel Weisz, Rachel Weiss, he was looking yeah. that old in that movie, too. Oh, yeah. He is just looking old now, which means that's why they're, they're looking around for somebody old enough to be his father. To, yeah, say, mm -hmm. Shall we say Sean Bean, Ooh. which is the favorite to be the new James Bond in two years? Yeah, which happens to be, isn't he older than Pierce Brosnan? Yeah. 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 Okay. And they replaced Pierce Brosnan because excuse was he was too old. Yeah. Not Let's put it this way: uh, Daniel Craig right now is the same age that Pierce Brosnan was when Pierce Brosnan got replaced. But Bro Pierce Brosnan wasn't getting old; he was getting more buff. Oh. I mean, he was fitting better into the role. But uh, they said we're looking for somebody to play the that's old enough to be not a spring chick's father, folks. Yeah, to play the role of James Bond. And I know he's a great actor, but um, but this movie, I mean, uh, there was nobody to watch it. I mean, we actually went to a, we went we, we go to see movies at different times to see, you know, and there was no general excitement in the room about the movie. Well, there was a couple times when everybody got excited. Yeah, but well, which is, you know, 
those are times you would expect them to get excited when the bad guys get shot down. Yeah. Or the, the, yeah, when they kick ass. Uh, yeah. But it was overly loud, overly, it was very bad. Okay, Lucas, I'm guessing Lucas effects all had to do with the, um, with computer work and not the other stuff because, like I said, the uh, gunshots were bad, the explosions were bad. The, um, you like the flashbacks? So the flashbacks were were badly done. And here's a tip off that there was a problem with the movies. They got film colorist in the thing. I know. I was kind of surprised about that. But you, do you think they're just correcting from what? They, um, they're trying to look, make it look like old film. No. Uh, they, they the older film. I know. But they, all they had to do was just keep shooting the crappy way they were shooting to begin with. The prints are washed out. It's basically not bright enough. But because they toned the light down to give you that dirty... Okay. Um, I, I can tell you that my father worked with William S. Hart and Tom Mix were way back at the beginning of the industry. They would have not have made a movie that looked like that. And these guys were purists. I mean, they would wear the cow outfits in the time period, and they made everything. I mean, Tom Mix had been a, a, a marshal. He was a, he had been in, a, a, he had been in the um, Mexican uh, Spanish American War. Uh, and that while um, William S. Hart was actually a Shakespearean actor to start yeah. making westerns, he was an expert on the American Indian and American West. Everything, you know, he, I mean, he quit westerns because he didn't like the way they were changing. You know, they thought he quit because he couldn't speak. The guy was a Shakespearean actor. He had a voice. He could speak. He, he had a big, big, booming voice. But he just didn't like the way they were going. And um, this is the end result. Of people, you know, well, I actually didn't grow up watching, um, you know, the Warner Brothers westerns of the 50s. I actually watched uh, the, you know, I watched the movies of the 70s, you know, the McCabe and Mr. Mil Mrs. Miller, and I would watch those westerns, and they were dark, and they were dirty, and the bad guy was the hero, and the good guys, there were no ever, there were no good guys. The good guys always got slaughtered in the movies. We had a good guy preacher he gets himself killed so do you have any challenges with um well let's just say uh daniel craig have, having amnesia they kind of explain that later. at the end everybody knows why you which is basically a big point in a movie at the end of the movie where you know that uh, harrison ford is very pleased to the fact that amnesia is a result of being taken by aliens i think he was happy with the this change of the sun yeah he, he got the sun he'd always walk <laughs> So, but um, and the mysterious bracelet. The no, serious mysterious bracelet, which, okay, we're going to give you a hint. It's a weapon, and and uh, when the aliens are attacking the people, they weren't using the weapons. They were coming out like little no. monsters, like running across the ground. So you know, I think maybe only special people had those bracelets. They had one inside the ship again. I know they did, and he gave it up so easily. I know. So, but, to a um, girl, of course. Yeah, but here's another big point. They were specifically told the aliens can't see well, so they don't come out in the daylight. And guess what? There's a mass attack by aliens with no weapons on all the guys outside. Yeah. Well, do you just think they're doing that because they were attacked? They had got, they had cannons on board the ships, which they never had to come out of the ship. You know, and their ship was big enough and strong enough that, what, the other one would have been just like ants, Yeah, right? so, but, um, so. these guys couldn't do anything to that ship. And also, well, I remember, they said, you know, we're going to get picked off like flies if we try to attack this thing. So, they attacked it. <laughs> They'd already made the point that they couldn't, be, there's no way you could get from here to there. And they went from here to there through the whole last part of the movie. They're listening to all this. They're thinking, golly, it sounds like we didn't like the movie at all and that they don't need to see it. Would you, okay, let's put it this way. What did you think about the movie? Yes, no, pause up, pause down. Well, I, it would be, uh, technically it's a pause down. Because if you see the talent that's involved with it, I wouldn't pay the money to go. I, you know, you go see it at a bargain matinee, but not. I wouldn't pay 15 bucks to go to nighttime for it. Yeah, I was just. I agree. I was disappointed with the results from the talent yeah. that was involved. Um, it's almost like it's a made-for-TV movie that was shown on a big screen. Well, half the people in that thing appear on the on oh. the, the Sci-Fi Channel on a regular basis. Folks. Except, of course, for having Harrison Ford in there. Well, actually, he does too. But he appears in feature films that he's made, but <laughs> and does uh, Daniel Craig. But it, um, and you got to understand. Uh, here's a trick: Who owns the Sci-Fi Channel? Oh, yeah. Who 
did this movie? The same Peter people that own the Sci-Fi Channel. Ah. That's right. And uh, a movie by committee with seven producers and five writers generally is a movie that's had budget problems. Then they, uh, they were throwing things in to the movie in order to try to make it more commercial in nature. Oh, really? So, but the problem comes is, I mean, I, I would not, I mean, last night, I, I, I would, you know, if we couldn't have got in on the fact that, you know, on, on a matinee, price. I wouldn't pay you to see it at full price. Yeah. I mean, this is one of those movies, it's like, I happen to be a fan of Harrison Ford, so I like to go see No, it. I, I think, I, I read the reviews. The reviews basically were kind to Daniel Craig. Yeah. But they said there was basically, you got to, you know, uh, you know a person that's at his age, uh, generally long before has changed the style of acting. He basically can drift quite well into a character actor's part. Uh -huh. But character actors can be leading men. All you have to do is look at Humphrey Bogart, Jimmy Cagney, and Edward G. Robinson were leading men and they were character actors. So he could basically remember Sean, Sean Connery get his Oscar for being a character actor. So he did. he was playing against type but he also, there's a lot of Harrison Ford that you recognize when he, he likes Oh, yeah. yeah. Just the, the mannerisms and the face yeah. and, and they the said, you know, you they, know, it's the Harrison Ford you love. It's a Harrison Ford you love. You know, likes kids mm -hmm. and things like that. And then they like, the guy that should have been his kid simply said, no, don't worry about him. He doesn't know any better. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> yeah. So here's part of it. This movie was in 2D. It yeah. looked like a movie that could have been in 3D with a special effect. It looks like a movie that's going to be in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what it looks like, folks. There's an awful lot of stuff coming at the camera. Yeah. And an awful lot of explosions going off at the camera. So and a lot of guns being used at the camera. So here's the question is, why didn't they release it in 3D? I, my guess is it was the intention to make it 3D and they decided not to invest in making the print 3D. And it could have been, oh, maybe eventually. But, you know, maybe it's because they had budget overruns, which is why they had so many yeah. directors and writers. Generally, and writers. generally when we go to the databases that we use and you can't find a price on it, it basically it doesn't have a chance in hell of making its money back they hide that from the people because they don't want you to know well let's say if it you know it's going to dis they said that uh, there's only a 38 percent approval th only 38 percent of the people in the surveys said they'd go see it, it said it it did it, it did less than than you know the, the you know battle in la so oh, wow. yeah, it, it rated below battle of la and nobody went to see it so well part of it is the other movie that was coming out this Week, with Smurfs. Weekend is Smurfs, but, which in a 3D movie, it's animation. We know the Smurfs are going to look great in 3D, yeah. bright colors. But matches. it doesn't have a leading actor, so uh, that does it. That, it's animation. Neil Patrick Harris is not a leading actor, no matter what. But um, still, uh, they figure they said if if Cowboys does not open at number one, they'd be very disappointed because if it, it will do a 50% drop off on. Um, and the second week of um, Thor should bring it down below what this movie is expected to do an opening at because they that they do is they uh, they open it at a, sat, uh, a midnight showing which is used to boost the um, box the box office, office. Yeah. midnight showings is always used to boost the box office so yeah. but uh, you know that's basically you know our review of Cowboys and Aliens it's not as long as our other reviews but uh, <laughs> but it does that there's uh, you know, we, we tried to give you the technical on the other side, but see, if we, if we really liked the parts of it, our views could go on for another 14, <laughs> they go 15 minutes. Right. So, but. Uh, Very hot Harrison Ford. Then you go see it. Yeah, I, and you want to go see a movie. But Daniel Craig doesn't have any fans, so it's a Harrison Ford movie. No, he does outside of this country. I know, but he the movie the country. movie has got to make its money here. If they want to do oh. a series of Jake, Mo or Jake, you know, the Cowboys and Aliens, Jake featuring yeah. Jake Honegrand. They have. They don't like him in the United States. So yeah. putting him in a movie that debuts in the United States, you know you're gonna tank to start off with. Well, that doesn't really help much. You don't do. You make it. They made this movie for the rest of the world. Yeah. So Cowboys and Aliens, a second part, questionable. Depends on. Well, it depends upon uh, if. Depends yeah, okay. on worldwide box office. Worldwide, it's gonna be uh, okay. If it has a good opening, but I don't think since they're hiding how much it costs. You know, I, uh, because Jake, I mean, I've seen John, we've seen Fabro, we've actually saw him. I think it's just a filler movie. Yeah, and I think it was filler because they want to keep him busy between this, this and the next Iron Man. He needed to do something. Yeah, it's a filler movie, I think. Yeah. yeah. 
so with that, I know. stay tuned for our other reviews. Yeah, which we'll, I don't know, we, we, we're going to go see, we, I, I, we're probably going to end up seeing Steel Man with, um, Hugh Jackman. with Hugh Jackman when it comes out. You know, I, I don't think we're going to go see Conan the Barbarian because it's a really bad movie. The, the people in Conan work on the Sci-Fi Channel. Really? Yeah. So that's like watching a sci-fi movie. You're watching a Lionsgate screen. film that was a cheap-ass production, so... Which is why the comedy's probably broke, but still, <laughs> next time, this is old camp. This is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.montybubbles.net on the net. Or .com. And wherever you're watching it, subscribe to us. Um, watch our daily newscast at 3D. And thank you for over 40 million links on the internet.